Justice and Reconciliation has been looking at. Um, and our next guest, Kim Wales, the project leader for the Reconciliation Barometer. And uh, their findings are quite interesting as far as uh, as South Africans, our interpersonal relationships with uh, and interactions with people of other races, uh, you know, how often does that happen and how qualitative is it? Is it a quality experience? So the question is around the frequency and the depth of the exchanges that we have with people of other races um, because the Institute um, also believes that for a, an effective way to reduce prejudice between groups, also in considering our past, but the most effective way to reduce prejudice within groups is through interpersonal contact under the correct conditions. And they asked respondents a number of questions. And one of them was, um, on a typical day during the week, whether at work or, or otherwise, how often do you talk to, to people from different race groups? Think about it. How often does that happen? You know, um, and also when you're socializing because you think that now, um, you know, barometer, what does that mean? It's basically an attempt to test the health of our country's reconciliation. Like a thermometer that tests the health of a, a, the human body, yes. we're trying to test the health of reconciliation and so no one thing, though, can indicate reconciliation. It's a very com- complex con- um, concept. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as a result, measuring it, it's really, really tricky. Um, but we try, we do our best, and we measure a whole lot of different aspects. We measure uh, um, the political um, relations and political culture. We measure race relations. We, me- we measure historical confrontation, how much South Africans have come to terms with mm-hmm. the legacy of the past. Um, yeah, we measure a whole lot of different things in indicate reconciliation, and then we've tracked that over the past 11 years to see if we're getting better or not and in which areas we're improving and which areas we're not improving and um, mm-hmm. what still needs to be done. Mm. And I know that for research, uh, it, the, the length of time and uh, the sample, of course, is critical, you know, in order for it to be uh, a quality study that you have to uh, dedicate adequate time, depending on the subject matter, of course, and the quality of the sample is critical so that it reflects the views of the population. What was the sample? So our sample has been 3,500 South Africans. And it's also the way that you select who's going to participate. So there's a formula that gets drawn up um, on how to select and from where you need to select mm-hmm. so that you have enough of different kinds of people um, in order to represent um, South Africa. Yeah, so it's 3,500 people, but then the, the actual way that we get the sample is all very scientific mm-hmm. so that we can scientifically say that our, um, our findings are a mirror image or they represent what South Africans in general think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you asked respondents to indicate the kind of groups with which they associate. Uh, what were some of the, 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 the elements or what, what were some of the features that typified this? Patterns of behavior. So even in the workspaces, um, what tends to happen is that people will will stick with what's familiar and stick with what's comfortable and then the the interracial boundaries get reproduced rather than challenged um and also unless organizations are aware of the dynamics of race Mm -hmm. and are um working towards creating spaces for dialogue connection for understanding people need in order to engage in a more honest and authentic way Mm. then yeah it's 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 also worrying because there's this discourse of let's move now, like it's enough, we've done enough. But then when you look at the reality, it also seems as if not enough has been done. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, people want to move on. They don't want to engage in it, but yet it's still so significant and it's still such an issue that it's, as South Africans, we need to um, be a little bit more brave, a little bit more open. Yes. Um, and you're right where that becomes possible, where people feel supported and also challenged. Mm, but whose responsibility is it, Dr. Will? Oh, that's a good question. Because um, you mentioned em- 
four years and I would think, oh, there's certain things that I certainly don't expect, say, uh, my children's teachers at school to uh, fail, you know, parts of their education or part of their development. I wouldn't expect the teacher or school to play a role that is, say, my responsibility or the family's responsibility. So same uh, with this, for instance, it's like the employer uh, exists for a very different motive or reason. Um, and should we be looking to employers to uh, help us with reconciliation? Whose responsibility should it be? Well, a question around that is who sets institutional cultures? Mm. Because institutional cultures can reduce um, our same racial patterns and dynamics or they can challenge them. So I think there is a responsibility that lies with who are in power in different spaces or mm-hmm. hold the power to shift institutional dynamics. But at the same time, it also has to be at the home. It also has to be with the family. It also has to be at the level of the, the individual. But if it's only at the level of the individual and the family, then you're going to go into work spaces and you come up against an institutional culture that is actually not going to work with you mm-hmm. towards um, shifts, shifting norms of whiteness. I've spoken to so many who talk about this um, code switching where more, the more city middle class spaces mm-hmm. are, are, not, um, are, are, are not very much. Hmm. And so then, yeah, so you start asking on the spatial legacy, the class legacy, mm-hmm. and how all of this affects um, reconciliation. Mm, so the poor continue to be excluded as well. As you say, that the upper LSMs, upper classes will get to interact, uh, but um, the lower LSMs, not so much. Unfortunately, that's correct. Mm. Well, let's get into headlines. My guest right now is uh, the project leader for Reconciliation Barometer at the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation. And we're looking at um, the fact that Africans, uh, over the past 10 years, they've been monitoring, looking at the frequency of uh, South Africans, how, how frequent we socialize across racial lines. And uh, we could be doing better. We definitely could be doing far better than we are. The numbers are low. Fewer than half of us socialize in our homes um, or other intimate settings with people of other races that's the reality so what's been your experience you know do, do you find that you have frequent interactions with people of other races if not uh why not does it speak to the class scenario that uh, dr whale has just uh, put forward that people within lsm's one to five the poorer people in our society uh, do not have enough opportunities to interact with people of other races and thereby being excluded and those that are of the higher at the different reality they get to interact and thereby there's inclusion so it is race uh, as well as our geo- uh, geographic location that uh, plays a part in how frequently we interact with people of other races but even in that interaction is it a quality interaction that's what i want to know have you been moved have you been able to have your mindset changed about another race from a quality interaction with a person from that race um or is it just all surface is it you know pleasantries and sweet nothings uh, exchanged all the way you know keeping peace keeping the peace and then you are um of interaction mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but again that's only because there's most of the people in LSM 1 to 5 are black South Africa. Okay. And it's kind of intuitive if you think about um, who gets to engage in the kind of middle and upper class mm-hmm. work spaces and spaces of interaction. Mm-hmm. And the fact that a lot of interaction has been assimilation, so assimilation into white spaces, previously white spaces, mm-hmm. rather than um, integrating into township spaces, like go, like te- making efforts or the the ge- geography of South Africa being reconstructed mm-hmm. so that there is a, a flow in both directions in terms of class. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I can ask that question, but again, it comes with a an explanation that it's mm-hmm. more about race, uh, it's more about class than race mm-hmm. as to whether or not like the degree to which people are engaging in interracial contact station. Let's go to Matlodi in Midrand. Good afternoon, Matlodi. Hi, Hi how Hello. are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Hi to your um, guest there. 
I, I, I want to tell you a little about mm-hmm. myself. Um, I, uh, five years ago, I, my daughter was, was five months old and she was admitted in hospital. And uh, I had to, you know, naturally, a, a mother, you want to stay there the whole week with the child or until they get discharged. Yes. So during the process, I met the Sikana, um and our, our daughters were in the same ward, bronchiolitis together, same age. Mm-hmm. We started chatting, you know, on the first day, it was all tense, you know, that why. And then we started talking, and we discovered we had a lot in common, and a friendship had been developed. And we started talking about our history, where we come from, why why this whole <laughs> race thing. Um, Go to Soweto, for an example. Mm. And then they meet kids. These kids get all so excited as if some gods came to their areas. I think one of the issues has to do with this uh, Dr. Clark experiment. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Mm-mm. Where they place two dolls. One was black, the other was white. Mm. And they ask the kids which one was beautiful, which one was intelligent, which one they loved. And all the black kids pointed to the blonde doll. So, you know, sometimes they say that kids cannot, I mean, do not understand racism. They just play with any kids that they come across. Notice that black kids tend to admire white kids because that's what they see on TV. Abby is a blonde uh, doll. Mm -hmm. So there's an imbalance. There's superiority and inferiority complexes when these two um, races meet. Mm -hmm. A poor white person can say, can have this mentality that, you know what, I am poor, but at least I'm not black, you see. Okay. But the, the wealthier you get, the more your, your confidence rises and the more you feel that you can interact with anybody. Mm, no, I hear you. Does It, it builds confidence, for sure. Yes. Lebo, thank you very much. And let's go to Lebo Hang in Rosebank. Hi, Lebo Hang. Hi, Zane. How are you? I'm well. How are you? All right. I thought Lebu would have said that the reason for the lack of interaction is because most white South Africans don't speak any African language. Mm-hmm. Not that the Africans don't speak, don't speak English. English. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's the first thing, comment for Lebu. But I also wanted to say that a lot of the inter- how, how often will you see that? You'll see it once in a while. Maybe if you go to the Commander Square or something. Okay. But it, it, my point is, Probably in that couple, how they met, they could have met maybe a South African lady might have flew to Cape Town because she's like, I mean, flew to UK okay. because she's right. something like that. Mm-hmm. It's nothing like uh, the white men went to a township or, you know. Okay. So there's, there's a whole area, but on my side, I think it's a more we tolerate issues. Mm, interesting, you know, and, 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 yeah. and, and I've tried to reach out for in my experience, and I realized it doesn't work this thing with trying to, to mingle to reach out. To another race, you know. All right. Uh, well, you feel in, internally, you feel like you are you are pitting yourself, or you, are, you know, somehow like you you're reaching too much. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's how I take it. Thank you. Let's get other people as well. But Doctor Well, from uh, the calls that we've had, uh, can we look at Lebohang's issue about young people and generationally? You know, are there different views held uh, by different age groups? I wish I. I could say yes, <clears throat> but um, we have looked at the data from youth and adults, mm-hmm. and the findings very, very similar. So age doesn't really be such a factor in um, how people understand reconciliation, how they understand the past. Mm. People tend to hold similar views um, regardless of age. So unfortunately, what's that, what that's telling us is that stuff isn't shifting um, from generations, at least in terms of perceptions and of reconciliation. The views are very similar. Um, they're very different across race groups, but they're very similar of, in terms of age or generation, youth okay. versus adult. Yes. Uh, let's go to Angela calling from Brinston. Welcome, Angela. Hi. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. I just have a short comment. And, and my comment is that one thing I, I think none of us are really saying is that I... I really don't think I, I love myself. Mm, absolutely, Kahamadzo. Oh, great call there. Lived experiences, of course, and uh, this is what we largely rely on, you know. Um, Dr. Well, let's look at Angela's point there and the questions that I said, if we could add them to this week respondents. What was the response to wanting to learn more about the customs and ways of other people? 
Okay, so when we asked people whether they want to learn more about the customs of others, white South Africans are much less likely to agree than other race groups. So other race groups are around 40% mm. agree and white South Africans are 27.3% likely to agree. Um, they were also less likely to say it's difficult to understand the customs of others. But I wonder whether that's because they, white South Africans live in a world where their language is dominant, where their culture is dominant. So I'm not always sure that they're even aware of the fact that other people are having to um, struggle with language mm-hmm. or it's adopt it on their behalf. Mm-hmm. And it's always interesting to ask the question, whose work? Should it be because it does seem that South Africans are not doing the work. I mean, you heard from all the all the callers that mm. um, they feel like they have to do the work, and white South Africans don't do the work. Mm. Um, but at the same time, perhaps it, the owner should be more on white South Africans because it's white South Africans who still have the privilege of living in a world where their their culture and their, their do- language is dominant. Mm. So um, yeah, it's a bit, a bit of a paradox. Because there's um, a lack of awareness, this idea that the the Thanks about uh, the conversation we had in the previous hour, which is uh, based on research that's been done by the Institute of uh, Justice and Reconciliation. As we spoke to Dr. Kim Whale, who's the project leader, it's, it's, 10 years has gone into the finding that she was revealing to us earlier. Let's go to Brenda quickly. Hi, Brenda. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well. I just wanted to say that, you know, redressing the effects of apartheid is about more than saying, uh, sorry, let's be friends now, because a lot of black people were economically disadvantaged. Mm. Things were taken for free. Therefore, for the 7% that's holding the wealth right now to uplift the rest of the what 90 percent of the population out of poverty they actually have to give things up for free Mm -hmm. it's not going to make sense any other way the math will never make sense black people who are already poor now will never be able to work their way up in of course a few people will be able to get rich Mm -hmm. but the numbers will never make a difference in terms of the wider population if free money does not now start going the other way Mm. No, I think uh, a lot of um, the, the the fact that you know people feel like they're bending over backwards, particularly the hardening of race, uh, of attitudes in this country of late, particularly speaks to the fact that so much time has gone by and we still sort of waiting to say, okay, show us, show us what it is that you're willing to do for this redress yes, to what achieve are you this redress. To do? People- willing to learn the black languages Mm -hmm. yet people will come from foreign countries get at the airport and buy a little book step off the play and say step off the plane Mm -hmm. something something no i hear you and then we have incidences of blackface 